and voila. Hello and welcome everybody to week two of the BNI Diamond Growth Program. This is, um, yeah, week two. I'm really excited about having you guys here. I'm really excited about having the people who are here live. And I'm super happy for the people who are watching the recording because I remembered to record it, number one. And number two, because you are investing in your chapter's success. And that's what we want. Your member's success is important. Your chapter's success is key. And uh, we want strong chapters with strong people. All right. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and get started. First of all, we wrote down last week that this was chapter revival. It's building blocks of success. And I just want to remind you, we know that you know a lot of this stuff or you have been informed about a lot of these things over time. What we're working on doing now is making sure that the entire chapter talks about these individual building blocks and how you're doing them so that you can improve them and make them really cohesive. Because when your chapter is working in a cohesive way, your visitor's experience is going to be great, your member experience is going to be great, and you're going to grow. That's what the BNI system is set up to do. It's set up for growth. And the Diamond Growth Program supports that with the building blocks to success. One more time, a reminder, the Diamond Growth Program brings about change. It's about conversation about these activities that you're going to have that will get you to your desired state. And your desired state is green and growing. Where do you want to be? Where would you like to be? Would you like to be in a very successful chapter that's got great energy, that's thriving each week, where you're excited about the presentations coming up, excited about the opportunity to meet new visitors, excited about the investment of time of being there? That's what we're really looking for, all right? We want you to be attractive to new investors as well. I want to proactively send people to your chapter without any hesitation, knowing that they're gonna get a great experience because they're gonna get a BNI experience with your flavor. Now, everybody knows, because I say it quite frequently, that every chapter is different. Every chapter has a different culture, a different way and a different feel, not just because of the venue, but because of the people. But we know that the system that we run is the same in every chapter anyway. So we wanna be attractive. And we want to be something that people want to be part of. We want to be something that people want to be part of, attractive like a magnet. So we're giving you some education and some conversations that you can have in your chapter about your culture to get the chapter back on track or to continue you on your path. All right. This presentation is being done for five chapters that have fewer than. 25 members, all right? Actually, all five of you have fewer than 20 members. It's also being presented to BNI Inspire. And BNI Inspire is a brand new chapter that is about to launch when they get to 25 members and they are on their way to that right now. So this presentation is the same whether you're on your way up or stable or on your way down. The concepts are all the same. So that's my little preamble. Um, growth will continue to your full potential once you do this. So last week we talked about what makes BNI so special. Does anybody remember what the answer was to this? Does anybody remember what the answer was to what makes BNI special compared to all of the other places that you could network? Commitment. Commitment. Absolutely. It's the commitment of members. And that's why last week when we went through the interview questions, you could see that they were all focused on the commitments of membership, the requirements to be a good participant. And the commitment of the leadership team is also important. So that's what makes BNI special. So a reminder about the program. Let's see, boom. A reminder about the program. Last week, we went through the chapter environment and we went through chapter education. All right. So we talked about those two things and you've got the recordings for those. This week, we're going to talk about the member experience and the visitor experience. So those are topic three and topic four. And I think you're going to get a great opportunity to think about things that your chapter can do 
in both of those experiences. In week five, six, seven, and eight, we're going to talk about weekly presentations, the referral process, power teams, and then what's next. What's next after the Diamond Growth Program? What should you be working on? So that's the program. And so let's go ahead and get started um, with topic three, which is the member experience. And, you know, maybe we could just unmute and talk about what is it like to be a new member? Some of you are in your first year in BNI right now. So you could answer that very easily. Some of you are only in your second year. You could probably answer that quite easily. What is it like to be a new member? Alan, you're unmuted, so I'm going to pick on you, and then I'm going to let everybody else unmute so that you can have a conversation. Grocery is so easy. Um, so, Alan, what's uh, well, uh, Nicole? I'll mute you for a minute, but Alan, go ahead. So, a new member, if they if they're new in business, they they find it um, very daunting, very um, very awkward right at the beginning. That they're very unknowing um, and very very different and strange, but uh, in no time, they become confident in speaking and um, they learn business processes. Uh, and uh, it just gives them, it gives them a, a, that confidence to actually stand up a, a, above the crowd within their vertical. Nice. Uh, you know, to, to really um, stand out, yeah. Nice. Alison, what do you think it's like to be a new member? It's your first first day. I felt so popular, like everyone wanted to have coffee with me. Remember, Ed, we had a lovely cup of coffee, our first one-to-one, -one, and uh, uh, I just felt like, you know, the bell of the ball. Um, it, it was such a warm, fuzzy feeling um, getting to know this lovely group of people. I love it. I love it. That's a great feeling. Mm. Um, let's see. Nobody else is unmuted. So Justin, I'm going to pick on you. <laughs> and and then after Justin, I'm going to pick on Rachel, who needs to change her name to Rachel. So Justin, oh, you're muted though, darling. Uh, I was just messaging Rachel to say, change yourself for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was the question? Sorry. Um, what's it like to be a new member? Oh, I love it. Um, I think someone said before where it's it's been a new business owner. It's it's allowed me to build a lot of confidence quickly, and um, the values the values that you guys have. Um, I really love like the givers gain approach. Like I'm, I'm learning a lot about myself. I'm learning a lot about other people and how I can help their business, and how all of a sudden my business and the value the value of my business has grown so much because as opposed to being a one stream business of a mortgage broker. I now have all these businesses who will more than be happy they help my clients, which is pretty amazing, actually. I love that. I love that. A great vibe. So we'll go Rachel and then Paul Hughes. What's it like to be a new member, Rachel? Think about day one, week one, month one. Yep. Um, so I feel a mix of mixed bag of emotions because like okay, there's a, a lot of to learn in within the portal um for my personal development. But at the same time, I also been um just like a um worry about how can I advance that, how can I been contribute to the um to the chapter, what I can what what I can do. So it's a mixed bag of feelings definitely to be a new member, but the second year is getting better because we already been um get to know about the structure, the process, and um, and now by taking um, over the um, leadership role, like because now I become a mentor coordinator, and I can be um, learning um, and other skill. How can I support the new members, which is allow me to grow a lot as well? So kind of neat because you see the bigger picture when you start to get into leadership roles too. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Paul yes. and then Vanessa. Okay, hi. Sorry, Wendy, I've just jumped in. Uh, hey, how are you? Um, so what was the question again? What, I, what, I, what do you think it's like to be a new member? Not you personally, maybe. Give us, give us the perspective. What do you think it's like for a new member to join b &I? Oh, yeah, look, um, having heard what Rachel just said, yeah, um, I think a bit overwhelming. Um, it is certainly there's a lot to absorb um, in, a quick, in, a, in a sort of fast period of time. 
Um, and, and by overwhelm, I think commitment in terms of every week, people coming to meetings isn't an issue. Um, getting referrals, I, I, I found that depending where you are and who you're with, that, that's probably a potentially a struggle. Getting visitors as well. Uh, so there's definitely certainly things in there, which and then obviously I think I, I sort of um, took a bit to get started on the, um, uh, the, the the training, the initial training, MSP, MSP, that's it. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Um, but but I think after a period, it's just like anything new. Once you once you sort of there for a while, you understand, get to know people. I, th I think the best thing that I from my own experiences are that and, and you know, I think the other chapters are similar as well. I've been to a couple of other chapters is very supportive. Yeah. um you know people there help you out they're not everyone's in it together sort of thing I love it all right Vanessa and then Mark I'm probably going to repeat what a lot of people have said but I think yes daunting if I think of my own experience and also my sister has just joined and she tells me every week how excited she is to come on a Friday morning get up early um and I felt the same way and also just what Paul said um, with the new members that have joined our, our group recently, the feedback is, is that they've been nurtured really well and supported um, and they can ask any question at any time and they know that they're not going to be judged or, um, you know, they, they've just, we've got their, their hand and they've got all of our support. I love it. That is so fantastic and I'm glad to hear a new member has that experience. Mark, and then we'll go to Alex. Um, I like watching them grow from the first time they come as a visitor and then as they get there for a few weeks, they start doing the MSP and a few passport one-to-ones and things and they start to get to understand the systems yeah. and they start to make connections with people that you don't expect them to make connections with, yeah. which makes the group big, bigger and stronger. Love that. Alex and then Ed. I can't find it. I can't do it for you, darling. I wish I could. Okay, I can. Yeah, sorry. Um, I just put my hands up because I'm at the moment that I can speak. Otherwise, I'll be driving. Um, so um, I just joined like April or April this year. So fairly new experience for me. Um, so the whole experience was excitement and also, also overwhelm. And so excitement is like, oh my gosh, and God, all of a sudden I have so much support and so many people can connect to and great opportunities. At the same time, it's also a massive learning curve for me um, to learn how BNI works and how can I contribute. A biggest worry for me at the very beginning is like, how can I give? And so <laughs> how can I fulfill all the referrals and how can I help my team members oh my gosh and so a lot of things is about like how can I actually uh fulfill uh that giving um like you know uh the giving part of that so like um rather than just receiving and so um yeah so that's my experience nice nice Ed and then Allison have I done you yet sorry I did I thought so Nicole will go um yeah <clears throat> Ed and then Nicole yeah, when I first came to our chapter, um, we had 35 members. So, yeah, I was really um, overwhelmed. And being a, a naturally shy person, I was uh, pretty nervous. I was nervous about coming into the room and speaking in front of everyone. Um, but I worked out the culture pretty quickly. It was, very, it was fun and relaxed in, in our chapter. So very quickly I worked out that, um, yeah, it was a good place for me to be. Nice. I love it. All right, so Ed and then Nicole. Uh, I did that. So Nicole and then I need to figure out who. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Where'd she go? Oh, she hit the wrong button. I know she didn't mean to do that because she was trying to figure out what button to hit. We've lost um, Nicole. Come back, Nicole. Does anybody else want to add to what we've just said? Does anybody have anything to add? I know I haven't hit everybody. Uh, all right. So the words I've written down are daunting times three. Um, unknowing popular i love that yeah now i remember allison there we go um the values were we're coming out and and learning i i heard learning um a, a bit a lot to learn wanting to contribute overwhelming times three maybe four <laughs> um supportive growth um excitement i love that wondering how i can give and getting used to the culture 
Yeah, the culture of BNI. and So these are the kind of mindsets that people are in um, when they're doing it. And we also heard words like passport. So we heard about passport mentors. We heard about business builder and the online portal. Um, and so, and, and then we also heard about one-to-ones. So, and, and weekly meetings. So we are throwing a lot of information at someone all at once, aren't we? You can see in this picture, this poor guy um, is going, wait, what do I do? Um, and so we want to realize that we need to help them feel amazing and in control and not overwhelmed. So we know that it can feel overwhelming. So we need to empathize with that. It might feel overwhelming in your first few months. We'd like to help it not be as much as we can. And that is the responsibility of everybody in the chapter. And so if everybody embraces the, the passport, the, um, the business builder training, the one-to-ones that they need to do with their mentors and making sure that they feel those weekly meetings are ones that they're starting to get that. I, I love that, uh, Justin, you know, they feel better. And Mark, you said you like to see their progression. Make them realize every week's going to get better and better. Every week, they're going to feel more and more confident. And so we need to have that sort of a culture to make sure that their member experience is good and to make it okay if they feel a little bit of overwhelm. Yeah, it's okay. Andrew, anything you want to add on that slide? It's very, very easy for established members to forget what it's like to be a newbie. And, yeah. and I think it's important that we do uh, from time to time when we have a new member and we're embracing a new member into a chapter that we we do remember or try and remember what it was like because yeah for, for a lot of us it was a uh, you know 10 20 years ago and I don't remember I'll be honest and there are people in your chapters who've been around for a long time and they we've changed so much in BNI we've gone well, online <laughs> we, we, we got rid of paper slips we got yeah, rid of paper, slip. paper slips we, we, we put MSP online, we, um, we have upgraded the brand and the feel of the, the overall reputation of BNI has changed a lot because of the brand change, I think. We've probably got a hundred times more the material available through Business Builder than we used to have through online learning, et cetera. We've integrated the passport, um, which was not there when I joined in 2011. There was no such thing as passport. And we've, we've created a, a, a really neat onboarding platform. So there's lots of things we do differently. And every role that we have in leadership has been modified over time to reflect changes in culture in, in the world, to reflect new things that we have opportunities to do. So the visitor host training has changed. It used to be done this way. It's now being done another way. The, the script itself for the way that the president runs the meeting has changed from a year ago and a year before that and a year before that. So we do change. You know how we uh, traditions and innovation? We have the tradition of the 20 point agenda, but we innovate it all the time based on feedback from you. So I went to an one-to-one um, -one today with a member who had a couple of, I think, very good suggestions to change the way that B&I runs overall. And I don't have the power to change that. I'm the owner of a franchise. I can't change the way the franchise runs, but I can make suggestions to people above me and see if they think that these ideas that came from members are worthwhile discussing and then making modifications to the system. That happens on a regular basis. So realize that, that there is so much change that the older members that Andrew's talking about, if they haven't done any training in a while, then they're still thinking that things are done the way that they were when they started and they aren't. That's why I'm really glad that people like Ed and Mark and Andrew and Annette are here because they, they have that experience um, in the past and they've watched the morph the morphing of BNI. Love it. Okay. 
on our next slide, we're gonna talk about the passport to success because not every chapter is using these, not every chapter is using them right. And we want to share with you what the passport entails. If you have one, great. If you don't, we are brought one. <laughs> um, now, Andrew is the head of retention in our region. And so similarly to the way that we went through the interview questions last week, we'd like to just take you through a tour of the passport. Um, Andrew, would you like to take this and I'll just flip the slide? Yeah, love to. Love to, love to, love to. So the, the, the passport, the, the first... Uh, the first time a new member really gets hold of their passport and actually opens it up and has a look is when they sit down with the mentor coordinator after their first meeting and they look at page one, or in fact, for, for us, it's page three. I don't know what happened to page one and two, Wendy, but page three works. And we put our name in. Welcome to becoming a member of, what, what's the name of my BNI chapter? We fill that in. We meet on what day of the week? We meet at the start time, what our address is, how much our chapter fees are, how do I pay my chapter fees? Why are we filling in this information, do you think, for a new member? Because this gives them something to refer to when they're away from the meeting. It gives them the feeling of belonging because this is their document. It's like when we come back into the country from overseas. It's our passport. We're coming back to Australia. We're coming back into the culture of Australia just as we're coming into the culture of our BNI chapter as well. So it's an embracing moment to be coming part of it. We get the opportunity as a mentor coordinator to run through the phases of BNI, how to use the passport. And as we flick over a couple of slides, Wendy, we have our BNI core values. So we get chance to run through and, and repeat what they are. But There's they're a lot also of... on the business builder. You can see, you guys, that it refers to BNI business builder right there as well. It does. It does. It does. It does. The passport states that it uh, should take. You should be able to complete your passport in ninety days. We actually in Sydney Northeast reckon we should be able to do it within sixty days maximum, right? Because if a new member is doing one or two one to ones with a member mentor per week, they're going to rapidly have this done. That's going to be great, but what's even more great is the new member is going to be receiving recognition for being, uh, if not in the green straight away in their first month, certainly by the end of the second month. And that's a fantastic moment for the new member to be well and truly powering on, engaged with the chapter, doing one-to-ones, learning about their fellow members and immediately building relationships. So how to use your passport? We get onto the most important page for me is the essential website apps for day one. This talks and shows about where we need to show our, our new member online. So the mentor coordinator might actually sit down and ask the new member, have you got your BNI Connect login with details with you? Yes, you do. Fantastic. Let's load the BNI Connect app onto your mobile. Let's get you logged in straight away. Let's have a look at the events. Let's go to our regional website and write that down at the bottom of page eight, such that we can actually refer through education back to our central website for our region. What is our regional website? bnisne.com.au, standing for Sydney Northeast. There, for those that haven't visited this page recently, Wendy and her team has. Uh, applied some rather groovy updates to this, which I think it now makes it the best ever. The thing I love the most is that you can go straight onto there and find a member very, very easy, easily in our region. So if you want an electrician, you type in the word electrician and you get the list of the electricians in our region straight away. Right. And showing a new member how to do that is really, really handy. What's over the page from there? We have our BNI policies, and then we start getting into our member mentor moments. So our first member mentor will be talking about weekly presentations. Now, the next eight pages of the passport are for each of the member mentors. And ideally, the member mentor will have the page out of the chapter operations manual as a handout for the new member to refer to with their passport. I've got a phone call I need to take, Wendy. I'm going to pass this back to you, please, for a tick. All right, cool. 
So I've just flicked through this. I just want to show you. So we start with weekly presentations because we know they have to do those right away. We know they have to do them immediately. Meeting etiquette kind of things to go through, being present, not being on your phone, not, not getting there late, not leaving early, all of those sorts of things. The one-to-one -one meetings then, we want to get those quickly and, and make sure they understand what to do in a one-to-one. -one. Referrals, how to give them, how to receive them, what to do. All right, let Justin in. How to ask for a referral. All right, so there's how to give them, how to ask for them. Um, and then inviting, how to invite visitors. And this is advice that the mentor, the passport mentor is giving to the person, but not just their own experience. There's actually training for each page. Each page has a document that we can give to the new person and a script or a structure to what the passport mentor tells that person. Oop, then we've got the visitor host experience. We want all of our members to realize what the host experience is. So you have a one-to-one -one with a visitor host so that you can learn as a new member, what does a visitor host do, all right? We often say everybody's a visitor host. The entire chapter is a visitor host and that's true and I totally believe it. But trained visitor hosts have responsibilities and we want the new member to know that so that they can set expectations well for the people who they invite. So very good for them to understand that. Leadership and visibility. The neat thing about BNI is that the chapters run themselves. The important thing for everybody to know when they first start is that they are going to be part of that. In fact, most of you on the screen right now, some of you are very new, but all of you have a role. Almost all of you are, have been assigned to some sort of role within your chapter because the chapters run themselves. And so this topic goes through the different roles and how to participate in them. Having an ambassador one-to-one -one with the person who's been assigned to your chapter. And if you don't have an ambassador assigned to your chapter, meeting with the director consultant who's responsible for your chapter. And every chapter has a DC. It's either Andrew, Annette, or myself. And we, we will absolutely have at, at a minimum a phone call or a Zoom call with each and every brand new member to say hello and to help them get their passport completed. Andrew, do you want to take it from here? Thank you, Wendy. Apologies, guys. On the right-hand side there, my goodness, how to successfully invite. Who was scared about inviting when we first joined a b &I chapter? <laughs> Both hands up. Scary proposition, but the passport actually gives us a little bit of an idea as to what to say and what not to say. So it's, it's a it's a pocket guide. It, it shares with us what to say, what to do without getting lost and uh, leaving us completely, totally and utterly speechless. Is that useful? Have you guys ever seen this? Anybody not seen it? Don't be afraid. It's it's quite it's not surprising to find people that have not actually. Uh, been through the passport in later days. The passport's available digitally if you haven't got one. Otherwise, all new members do receive their uh, do receive their passport in their in their new member pack. Hey, Andrew, why do we avoid saying all of these things? You want to go through each one of those? I certainly shall. I'll just make it a little bit bigger so I can. There we go. Weekly meeting. Avoid saying weekly meeting, avoid saying join, avoid saying networking. Well, we don't want to put pressure on people, do we? B and I self sells. Okay. I, I love hearing when a, uh, when a member has shares how they invite others. And one of the best phrases I've ever heard of somebody sharing is, I'd like you to keep, like to, you to come along and meet my networking team, my marketing team. It's my team. They're all there to support me. And if somebody starts talking and asking if it is B&I, &I, I will share, gladly say, absolutely it is. And it's the B&I team that today is vastly different to what you might have seen in the past. But I'm not about asking you to join. I just want to share my team with you. You never know. Somebody might like to actually ask to talk to you. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, I just want to share. 
Yeah. We don't talk about member success program. We don't talk about one-to-ones and palms because that's way, way, way too complicated when talking to a visitor or a prospective visitor. Yeah. People um, do have a tendency to try and sell BNI before people have seen BNI. No need. You don't need to. The actual, what Andrew said is right. It sells itself through the 20 point agenda. The, the agenda that starts with open networking and finishes with a closing quote. And all of the things in between that we do each and every week are designed to attract the right visitors to consider applying, which is why we don't use the word join. You can't join BNI, you can apply, and then we can accept your application. So would you like to join is not a good question at the end of a, of, of a meeting. Would you like to apply is the right question. I love also too on this page, Wendy, the 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 comfort statement. I'll be waiting for you at the door ten minutes before start time. So for most chapters, yeah, quarter to seven is the time to receive visitors and what have you. I'll be there from half past six, ready to meet you when you arrive. And I'd like to introduce you to whoever you'd like to meet, or thinking about contact spheres, introduce somebody that uh, is in their contact sphere. So again, they immediately feel like they belong. Yep. Um, there we go. And the last page. Ah, <laughs> the checklist. Tick, tick, tick. Yeah. If we run down through this and as a new member or ensure that the new member has an idea of how this works, then your new member is definitely going to be in the green during their second month. Uh, I can't see a reason why not, because each of these components uh, from the checklist will actually ensure that you are. Like, for example, showing a new member how to actually prepare for a weekly meeting, their weekly infomercial, let alone their, their uh, attending member success program, let alone their prime, their first presentation. I was at a chapter this morning and we had a new member giving their first presentation and it was probably one of the best I've ever seen. I could tell that person had done the training. They'd been, they'd been mentored really well and it was a, an amazing success around the room. But if you do run through the checklist and you're missing something, it gives you an opportunity to go back to your mentors as well and actually cover off on that missed item along the way. Yeah, I love it. You know, um, yeah, I, I, I'll talk too much, so I won't. I'll just keep going. <laughs> That's the passport, you guys. It's so important. And if your chapter is using it well, keep it up. And if your chapter has each of those mentors assigned, so just going back up, you know, each one of these has a mentor name. There is about five minutes of training. It's, seriously, it's about five minutes. And if you're really dedicated, you listen to all of the mentor training. So there's eight mentors times five minutes, 40 minutes of, of videos that you watch so that you know what everybody else is saying so that you don't have to do what they do. You only have to talk about the visitor host experience. You don't have to go into this. And that way, the one-to-ones are really important that you're having with them. So when there's a couple things about the passport I think are important. Number one, honor the passport as in, more important than meeting with you. Meaning a new member should finish their passport before they start meeting with everybody else in the chapter. And what you can ask someone is you can make them feel popular like what Allison was feeling. You can make her feel popular and say, listen, I'm so excited to meet with you. As soon as you finish your passport, I want to be the first one on your list. Or Allison can say, listen, I'm super excited to meet with you. I'm passport number six. You don't have to go in order. Can I get you first? And you don't have to go in order, by the way. It, it does not need to be in order. So although they go in an order that does make natural sense, it doesn't need to be that way. So I think it's really important that you make them feel great and honor the commitment to the passport so that they can get through it more quickly because they will have better one-to-ones with you if they've done the one-to-one -one passport training, won't they? If you can honor that, that would be amazing. Hello, Crystal, and welcome. There we go. All right, so that's the passport. 
The next thing we'd like to talk about with regards to being a member is one-to-ones. And so the first thing I'd like to share with you, I'm sure you have updated and have everything done in your Danes profile. And if not, I think you should revisit it on a quarterly basis anyway. Quarterly is about how often I tend to need to look at my gains and go, ooh, I need to update that. Do you ever look at your gains and say, oh, I've already accomplished that or, and it's no longer a goal or I've changed that goal. It's no longer to do it by the end of this year. It's to do it by the end of next year or something else or a new accomplishment that you have. So GAIN stands for goals, accomplishments. I can't work my words. Interests. Accomplishments, that's the right word. Interests, networks, and skills, all right? So those are the things that people want to know about you when you first meet them. And you should always revisit the GAINS exchange when things change, update people. So if I have a one-to-one with Emma, and I already have, I've had a couple of one-to-ones with Emma. And when we have one-to-ones with each other, we can revisit the gains and explain what's changed since the last time. And then we can start to get into more detail about her clients, about how her business has modified, about how referrals have come in and which ones have been good. So over time, we layer the information that we learn about each other. But it all starts with the gains exchange. All right. So very important to start with those. Then you can start to form a trusted relationship with people. And you can start to explain to them about this. Does anybody on the call want to explain what planning, bragging, and complaining has to do with a one-to-one? Anybody can answer this, except for Andrew and Emmett. And Ed, <laughs> if you're on the DNA team, shush. If you're not, speak up. You should go into a one-to-one with a, with an idea of what you want to achieve. So you should identify if you want to know more about a person's services or what they're looking for, and if they if you want to show them what you're looking for and give them an example of how you can help their um, network. Absolutely. Knowing what they're looking for is really important. I love that. Um, Alex would like to share. Yes, thank you for the opportunity. So I think they are the, um, my understanding is that is the opportunity for you to identify referrals. And so if someone who is brag, brag, uh, what was that, bragging um, is an opportunity like to explore new opportunities and lead to referrals. And so I think the goal of the one at the end of the one on one, it's how many referral you can give to each other. Um, that is a measurement of whether this one on one is effective. That's my understanding. I love it, Alex. Thank you. Who else would like to add? Alan, I think you were going to say something. Yeah, I was. Um, I've just had a one on one on one, and uh, I actually, um, I actually discouraged the person from from doing exactly that because I was there to to learn about their business and it was just going to be a waste of time for me if I'm sitting there listening to um to someone just um having having a rant about things and so um I just calmly said you need to speak to the right person and and then uh but let's let's talk about what what we can do for each other right here and and we got back on track that way nice okay so are you thinking that the word complaining there is about not complaining during a one-to-one? Well, yeah, exactly. Right. They, they were, um, you know, we weren't talking about a one-to-one. We were talking about things that they weren't happy with. And so- Absolutely. That's a really, that's a, that's a fantastic bit of advice for all of us too, probably. Let's, Maybe there's a portion of the, can, do, can we spend five minutes complaining about something and see if we can resolve it? Maybe that's a good five minutes part of a one-to-one, but spending the whole time doing that would probably be a complete waste of time. I agree with that. But complaining here is not about that. Anybody have an idea of what complaining is on this slide? Alex was on the right path. What people it's, are 
Oh, go ahead, Ed. I was just going to say it's someone in your contact who's complaining about something. So if they're complaining that their electrician didn't turn up on time, you can say call Ed because he will. That's exactly right. That is exactly right. So these are things we should listen out for when we are networking. So when we are meeting people out in the world, when we're talking to our family, our friends, our neighbors, people that we meet at a chamber of commerce meeting, people that are our suppliers or our clients, and they're planning something. They're planning to go overseas. They're bragging about the fact that their business is going so well that they're going to need to hire new people or move into a new establishment. They're complaining about how slow their computer is and that it keeps crashing on them. All of these things are indicators that someone needs help. Someone needs service. And what our job as members is to do is to share with those people that there is a solution or an opportunity that you can put them in touch with. There's a connection you can make. They're planning a trip overseas. You can ask them if they have already worked it out or would they like to talk to a travel agent? If they have already got their travel insurance, have they, are, are they getting outfitted for it? Are they gonna buy some new outfits before they go so that they can travel lightly? What, who are the people in your network who you could connect them with to make their trip even better? Yeah. Um, if they're bragging about their business growing so quickly that they really need to think about things, this might mean they need a business coach. It might mean that they need a commercial real estate agent. It might mean that they need um, a, a new IT support and get things going. It, it, there's so many things, it, an interior fit out specialist. There's so many different indicators that, that bragging might indicate, all right? And then complaining. This is the mecca of all referral sources. People you're talking to complaining. And the first thing you should ask them after listening to them nicely is, would you like a solution or is it just helpful to get it off your chest? Yeah? You don't want to be the know-it-all that goes, oh, I've got someone for that. I can fix your problem. They might not be wanting a fix. But you could ask them, would you like, I, 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 do, have, I do know people who can help with that. Would you like a connection? So we aren't pushy in b and at all. But we listen. We actively listen to people in order to hear what they're planning, what they're bragging, what they're complaining about. And we're trying to connect the dots. Well, who do I know that can help that person? Because they might need a supplier that I have connections with in my BNI chapter or in my region or in my world, right? So that's what, when you're doing one-to-ones, what we need you to teach each other is the things that people would be planning that would indicate that they need you. The people that would be bragging and how that would indicate you and the people that would be complaining, what would they be complaining about and how would that indicate you? And then you can teach each other how to turn that into a referral rather than a lead. If you hear about someone who wants a real estate agent and is wanting to sell their house, but they're not happy with who, the people who keep putting flyers into their, into their mailbox, you, you want to talk to them about the opportunity to meet with a real estate agent that you know, like, and trust. And you actually have a connection with them that's very, very personal. And you'd be happy to make a connection. Would they like that? Yeah. So these are the questions that you teach each other. And this is why B and I one-to-ones are not coffee catch-ups. These are business meetings. You're explaining to each other how to find referrals for each other. I'd love a little bit of feedback now that I've explained those three things. Anybody have any comments or thoughts? Or I actually have an A4 sheet of paper that has all of the things that people would be planning, bragging, or complaining about that would indicate that people would need my strategic networking course. It's all written out. And it, it's in, in word forms, like, like, you know, sentences that you might hear out in the world. Could you do that about your business? 
the more you actually do this, Wendy, over time, people will see you as someone who knows people, someone who has contacts, a provider of solutions. Um, don't be afraid. And when you're in a one-to-one -one environment, don't be afraid to say, listen, would you mind if I share with you what people might be planning, bragging, or complaining about that would indicate that I would be a good supplier? I mean, they need to find referrals, right? So if, if Justin and Rachel are having a conversation with each other, where'd Rachel go? Rachel went. How about Rachel? Um, <laughs> anyway, if Justin and Rachel are having a conversation with each other, they're trying to help each other, right? Justin, you want to help Rachel and Rachel wants to help you. So when you're learning about each other, make sure that this is one of the things you can go through. So the gains profile is just the start. The planning, bragging and complaining helps get that more in line. All right. So when you go networking, what do you hear? When someone says it to you and you go, oh, I could help with that. That's something you should write down. Frequently asked questions. If, if a client comes to you and says, or, or a prospect comes to you and says, this is the problem I'm having, add that to your A4 list because your clients just told you what they're complaining or bragging or pl planning about, right? So they've told you that you can add it to your list. So you can keep compiling your list as you hear new things. It's really incredible. It's a really incredible way to have a one-to-one. -one. All right, contact spheres. In your one-to-ones, you should talk about your contact spheres. Who's in our chapter who is with us? You're talking one person to another, right? And maybe you're in the same contact sphere and maybe you're not. So in, in Justin and Rachel's case, they're not in the same contact sphere, all right? But when they're having a conversation, Justin could say, listen, let's look at mine and see where the gaps are. And do you know anybody in this contact sphere? Could you introduce them to me outside of the meeting? And I might be able to invite them to come and I'll let you do the invite. Like you can... You can help them to do that and vice versa. If you are in the same contact sphere, you could collaborate about who you want to invite. You could go onto each other's LinkedIn's and look for new people who are in open categories and say, oh my God, I forgot about that person. Let's invite them. Building your contact sphere will build your referral network. This is a great conversation to have during a one-to-one. -one. Incredible and very important. It's also something you can do each time that you meet with them. So Mark's been in BNI for how many years, Mark? Is it eight? Long, it's longer than that, isn't it? Uh, it was seven the first time, and then <laughs> I'm probably in my fourth year or probably four and a half years now. Right. So about 11, say, gotta, 11 gotta, or 12 be close to five. It could be close to five now. And yeah. so every time you meet with someone in your chapter, you have something new you can talk about because the chapter moves and changes around this. And so talking about the contact spheres, it's intentional. And it's also something I want to give you permission to be selfish about. Selfish, be selfish. I need this person in our chapter because I would be able to give them so many referrals. It would make me look like a rock star. Or... I want this person in my chapter because I know that they would have referrals for me over and over again once they got to know, like, and trust me. So I want someone who I like to be in that. Can you help me? And maybe the two of you collaborate and, and, and get it all together. And then you say, listen, why don't we go out to lunch with this person and see? And then we'll invite him to come to the meeting with us. See, you don't have to always invite them to the meeting right away. Maybe you should start a relationship first and then invite them to the meeting. Maybe they'd feel more comfortable. Contact sphere development will make you more successful. About 60% of your referrals will come from people in your contact sphere. So you might as well make sure that that contact sphere is as big as it can be. And finally, power teams. We've done power team training in the region. We will do it again. If you missed it, it'll happen again, I promise you. If people invite you to be part of a power team, say, wow, tell me more. Because being part of a tower, power team 
means you have a vision, an objective, a strategy, and a plan to make more referrals happen. Your power team might be part of your contact sphere, or it might not be. Alan and Jonathan Indra in their chapter have started talking about an interesting power team that has a mechanic and a wallpaper guy in the same room with each other strategizing. Alan, would you like to share what that might be, what, what the vision was for it? Uh, yeah, so, um, so basically started off from obviously doing the power team training. Um, we got in a room with a few people, uh, breakout room, and uh, it was about sort of four, four or five of us who kind of uh, broke down what that power team might look like. So now myself and Jonathan are looking to also add a photographer to the to the to the mix, a photographer, um, interior designer, and maybe a videographer with another one. So I guess just and the idea is to target some of the um, what do you call them play groups. I don't have kids, so it's very hard for me to get my wrap my head around it. But all the play groups and the um, uh, kitty centers, you know, so we were going to put this team together and put a proposal together that we can sort of drop, knock on the doors and see if we can uh, pull everything in. Because John does the baby car seats. So people safe. with babies, people with babies and yeah. people who are expecting are gonna, and people with children want safety and security. That's They're right. always thinking about a nursery. They're thinking about making sure the baby seat fits. They're thinking about making sure they get the photos at the right time. They want to video special events. How great is that as a power team? So that's an example of a power team that crosses contact spheres. If you didn't get the training, don't worry about it. It'll come again. But if that is a great conversation to have when you're having a one-to-one, -one, could we put together a power team? All right? Andrew, anything to add to that? Annette, anything you want to add to that? Because that's that's one to ones need to be powerful. Oh, they do. And the ultimate one to one to me, when sitting down with somebody in your contact sphere, is when they offer to share their contacts with you. Run through my contacts, see who I know. I'd I'd love you know. I'd love I'd love love to share with you my contacts and see where we can help each other. That to me is the ultimate accolade in terms of a one-to-one -one with trust, relationships, et cetera. Um, give us going. Annette, do you want to add anything else? Um, I think the other thing is that don't limit yourself to, I think you've seen that with Alan and them, don't think just because they do something or someone's in a category that they won't be able to refer to you. Everyone can refer. We have, you know, the sales and marketing team of how many of our members, they've all got contacts, they've all got problems somewhere. So just don't sort of narrow your vision on who yeah. might work. Yeah, you don't have to only meet with people in your contact sphere. You need to actually, everybody in your chapter is going to be able to help you and you never know who they know. Um, anyway, one-to-ones are, are incredibly powerful and I don't think we do them well. And I say that not just in BNI Sydney Northeast, I say that across all of BNI, if we spend more time in good quality one-to-ones, you will get more referrals and be able to give more referrals. Every, every one-to-one should have a purpose, an agenda, and a length, and a takeaway. Commit to something at the end of it. Commit to something, just one thing. I'm going to invite that person as a visitor so you get to meet them. Or... I'm going to introduce you guys over a cup of coffee in the next two weeks. Or I'm going to ask them that question that you just shared with me to see if they're a good fit for you. And then I'm going to follow the process you just shared with me to recommend you and to give you that referral. So powerful. Let's go that one step further as well. If you do actually happen to come across somebody in your in both of your contacts where the indication is you'd like to meet them. What's wrong with actually setting up a meet, setting up a meeting, making that call, and making that happen now? It, it is just so so powerful. 
I might include in our follow up notes a um, link to one of my very favorite videos, which is called Cup of Tea. And it's not very long. It's in fact, you could you could um, look it up. You just type BNI Cup of Tea and the video will come up on YouTube. And it's one of my favorites. And it shows you the difference between a boring one to one and an effective one to one. <laughs> and uh, all right, you guys, let's keep going. Is everybody OK? Let's take a deep breath in and out. OK, good. Keep going. Um, gamification. BNI is all about gamification in order to make this a little bit fun and to make it a little bit competitive and to ensure that everybody's keeping up their commitments. But one of the things that culturally you in your chapters can deal with is this. Please make sure that everybody knows how to input the content of their activities into the system. And they can do it right here online or they can do it right here on their phone. They just click on slips and put them in or they submit them here, one, two, three, four, and five, all right? You can submit all of these here and then you can review all of it down here. It's so important that you put that in on probably a weekly basis. Do you have a quarterly thing that you do? If I used to pay commissions or, or be paid commissions in my business, and I also did retail sales. So my retail sales, I would put in on a weekly basis. And my quarterly, my commissions, I would put in on a quarterly basis. That, that was, and I told everybody that. If I get paid commissions based on a referral you've given me, I'm going to pay it on a quarterly basis. And I would always do that. You need a system and you need to have a, a way of making sure that you do it. Here's, here's a tip. Book yourself 15 to 30 minutes, two days before your meeting to input all your slips and to do any follow-up that you thought you needed to do for your visitors. Just 15 to 30 minutes. And I just had it in my diary right there, just boom. And it, it just said, it just said meeting prep. And it was so that I'd put all of the closed business that I could and I'd put in all the referrals. I'd look through things. I'd think about what I'd done. And I would just have it ready to go. This should be fun. You know, it, and, and if you're not putting in your thank you for closed business on a regular basis, then you're not thanking the people who are giving you the referrals. And don't you want to? I know you do. I know you want to thank them. And if it was a shitty referral and you still got the business and still got the thank you, the then thank them anyway and then book a one-to-one -one with them. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have sworn on the video. For all of you on the video, just, you know, we'll edit that out. No, we won't. Okay, so... <laughs> No, we won't. But if it was a bad referral and you still got the business and you're like, ah, oh, I just didn't even like it. You still put in the thank you for closed business. You book a one to one with that person. You say, thank you so much for thinking of me. Thank you for giving me the recommendation. Thank you for giving them to me. And I, I did the business and they loved it. And now I'd like to share with you what I'd really like. You know, I'm, th I'm looking at Alan Skinner right now, just smiling at and, and I'm thinking, you know, what, what is Alan really looking for? And if someone gives him something that's really teeny weeny and he's like, oh my God, of course, okay, I'll do it. But it's not my target market. Well, how are they going to know that if you don't tell them? The culture of your chapter needs to be that you're okay to receive that feedback. Because I think you'd want to be able to give that feedback if it was you, wouldn't you? Yeah. So what if you had given, what if I give Crystal a really bad referral? You know, I give her someone that is, doesn't have the budget, isn't interested really in, in doing anything, just wants to, you know, waste her time and kick tires. I don't know. I'm, I'm making stuff up. But if I give her a really bad referral, should she not tell me and just let me do it again and again and again? Or should we have a one-to-one -one where she can say, listen, Wendy, that person was, was nice and lovely and it was nice to meet her. She's not really my target market. But let me share with you the, the last five people that I've worked with that were perfect and where I found them, how they were referred to me and why they're perfect. She's educating me. So educate your fellow people and thank them 
All right, make sure you're thanking them and figure out a strategy to put your slips into the system. Now, the last slide in this section, topic three, which is the member experience, is substitutes. And um, Andrew and I went through this slide and we, we had a lot of thought about it. And we'd like to talk about the culture of your chapter. Remember, you as an individual member might be doing a lot of things well. We want you to talk about the culture of your chapter with this. And the first thing we wanted to say is that we've seen a lot of chapters not have this culture. It is your responsibility to find a sub for yourself, period. Number one, and the first place you should go to find a sub is you. Who will I get? Who will your network, who out of your network could substitute for you? Do they work with you or for you? Are they living in the house with you? Are they your neighbor? Are they a supplier? Are they a client? Who in your network could sub for you? You're planning in advance, obviously, because you need a substitute. Who is in your network? And you reach out to them and you ask them nicely to represent you in a meeting that's really important to you. And that you think that they would be really good at representing you and you will prepare them with everything that they need to know. All right. It's definitely the first priority would that they come out of your network. Now, let's say that your network is falling short. Another place that you can go to before you rely on anybody else is the past visitors that have come to your chapter and that you have met already. They've already been to your chapter. They've seen how it works and you've met them and you've grabbed their card. Could you call them and invite them to represent you? Maybe they didn't join because they could come um, every week, but maybe they can come the week that you need them to. Or maybe they didn't become a member because someone else is already in the chapter in that seat. Can they sub for you if that's the case? So, you know, Ed is a Sparky, but what if Annette needs a sub and she meets a Sparky and she wants to have a sub there while she's in Melbourne preparing her whole new business and going nuts? So can she do that? Absolutely. And the etiquette would be that she would say, listen, I really need a substitute. I think you'd be great at it. I'd love for you to come and be represent me. And I'd love you to meet the electrician who's in our chapter, Ed Ray. He's amazing. And he loves meeting with other suppliers. So he'd be really happy to meet you, actually. Yeah. And what do you do after that? You ring Ed and say, I've got an electrician coming. Clear the way, clear the airwaves, making sure he's comfortable. And that way, Ed knows to actually welcome the electrician yeah. as, uh, as a possible referral partner. Yeah. And you're not asking Ed's permission. You're informing Ed of what you've done and you're prepping Ed so that he's aware of it. Because Ed's not going to lose his credibility in the chapter. He's a long-term member with an established credibility. Even a new member, actually protect new members more because they don't have that established credibility. But substitutes should be anybody is fine to be a substitute if they will do it for you. All right. So past visitors would be good. And then your BNI network outside of your chapter. That's your third point of call. But call people individually. It's not right to prepare and call the president and say, does anybody in your chapter want to sub? Could you put that into your WhatsApp chat and ask if anybody can sub for me on Thursday because I am i can't come? That's just not right as your first point of call. Your first, first point of call is you. And it's not right to convert a visitor to a sub. It's just not. And we're going to talk about the visitor experience in a minute, but the visitor should be there thinking about themselves, not thinking about you thinking about their own business and, and what they're getting out of the experience, not thinking, okay, I've got to say Allison's script well, 
and I've got to make sure that I'm ready. I've, I have to speak twice. Okay. I've got to do, all right, I've got to do that. Oh, and I have to introduce myself. Okay, what do I, we want them to be focused, laser focused on experiencing the meeting, not on thinking about all these other things if they're visitors. So the best thing to do is to prepare for your subs. And a great way to do that is something that Andrew said that we should mention. And that was the prepare sub day, wasn't it? Yep. yep, yep Tell yep, us yep. about that. What is that? Preparing a sub day is where you... If there's a if there's somebody in your own business that's coming along as a sub, bring them along and introduce them, prepare them so that they're familiar with the meeting. If they're if they're really really keen, you might even have them attend the member success program or a discovery session. But even if they don't come along, make sure that you've actually briefed your sub by talking through the agenda, talking through such that they understand what their expectations are in the meeting, and give them a script. Yeah. And one, of the, one of the um, worst things you can see, sorry, Wendy, one no. of the worst things you can see is a sub come along to a meeting and there's suddenly, oh, it's, oh, it's my turn. Where's where's my phone? I, oh, I haven't got it on the screen. I'm sorry. I'll be with you in just a tick. Hang on, hang on. Uh, now I've got it. I, I, I'm representing um, Bill, et cetera, right? But on from that, the other worst thing to see is somebody sitting in a meeting and for the entire meeting, except when they're standing up, is playing on a phone or an ipad and that that's a pretty detractor average detractor as well yeah we want to we do want to make sure that they enjoy the Engagement. meeting as well fun yeah. fun attributes to them too the other part before that too though um is in the i have prep your sub for that I've yep. heard too many times oh they did gave me nothing no absolutely Little testimonial have you a know, one with them we're actually going to go over that too in uh, week three. We're going to talk a little bit about what to prep for the meeting because the I haves is as important, if not more important, than the um, the referral request. If you prepare your I have moment well, your credibility will shoot right through the roof. So we're going to teach you that. I'll show you that. Okay. Um, so Andrew suggested your chapter having a bring in a sub day and having some rules around it. Where um, there's no BNI members allowed to be subs because you're trying to you're trying to expand your network and no one who has subbed before and it, it give give your chapter plenty of time to plan for this might be something neat for like six weeks from now have a bring a sub day and it'll double your group for that day and you could you could make it a lot of fun anyway so that's a little bit about subs. Let's go on to topic number four, then out of our eight topics for this whole diamond program, we have 18 minutes left and I promise you we'll finish on time. So the next question that we had is what is it like to be a visitor? And so I want you to think back to when you were a visitor at BNI for the first time and what your experience was. Were you greeted well? Did you know everything? Did you have your expectations set beforehand? Did you get invited by someone or did you just rock up? Um, you know, were you given a, a badge so that people knew your name or did they forget your name all the time and have to ask all the, all the place? Um, did you pay in advance or did you have to pay when you got there or did they send you an invoice after because nobody knew what was going on? Um, or did you not pay because maybe they didn't have their stuff together, right? Um, did you enjoy the experience? Did you feel valued? Did you feel popular? You know, uh, you know, did did you feel like the members were speaking to you? You know, when when we're speaking in a BNI meeting, we're really speaking to the visitors because we're we're each guiding them along the way. So if we're only speaking to the members, the visitors are feeling like it's an inside crowd. But if we're speaking to the members, uh, to the visitors, I mean then they'll have a better experience. And so will the members because we're all teaching the visitors what we're doing. So just remember what it was like to be a visitor. And we want to tell you how to invite people and how to invite people to your referral network. It's covered in the Passport Program, of course. But here's some great words. I'd like to introduce you to my referral network. These are the people I meet with every week because I know, like, and trust them to help me build my business. And I know, like, and trust them enough to help build theirs. I'd love to introduce you to them. They're my referral network. 
and invite them that way. Now that's for anybody. Anybody you invite, you can use those words. But when you're inviting someone specifically, because you think it might be good for them to use BNI as a marketing tool, then you can use the acronym called GRIP, which I'm sure if you've done MSP, you've been trained on GRIP, but I'm going to just share it with you. The first question is, would you like to grow your business? That's what the G stands for. The R stands for, assuming they say yes, they want to grow. Would referrals help? That's the R, referrals. Would referrals help? If they say, yes, referrals are what most of my business comes from, you say, great, I'd love to invite. That's what the I stands for. Invite you and introduce you to my referral network. They will want to meet you. And then the P is for you to tell them the place of where we meet and when. All right, grip. Do you want to grow? Would referrals help? I'd like to introduce you and invite you to come and meet my referral network. And the P is here's the place and here's the time. Don't you don't need to tell them anything else. And we've already covered that in on the passport bit. You don't need to say it's weekly. You don't need to say you're a member. You don't. I mean, you can say you're a member, but you don't you don't need to say that they need to be a member. Say, listen, I just want you to come and visit. That's how to invite people. Now, once they've said yes, then I would suggest that you then register them. And we're going to show you on this slide, slide how to register them if you don't know. You go onto your handy dandy little connect app on your phone because we know you've got your phone in your hands right now. And you, you, you click on visitor and then you click on register a visit. So see how it says register yourself. So you can register yourself to visit any chapter, but right now we're talking about inviting a visitor. So you invite a visitor to come. And the next side, you pick Australia, you pick BNI Sydney Northeast as the region, and then you pick the chapter that you wanna invite them to. All right, so it'll take you through that. So you wanna invite them to your chapter. And then you wanna put in, you need to know their first and last name. So if you don't know their first and last name, ask them what their first and last name is. Or Wendy, if they happen to be in your contacts and your device already, click on the phone book in the uh, title line and select the information from your contacts. And it'll pull it right out. That's what that little icon means. And it makes it very easy for you. English. Sorry, we have to answer that. It's a global system. So we answer that. And then their phone number and their email address. Don't use your phone number. Don't use your email address because the reminders go to them. You don't want to be receiving both the acknowledgement that you invited someone and the reminder. You want them to be receiving that. The system is set up to help them. You do not have to fill in the address details. It's not the address details of the venue. That's already in the system. This is asking for their address details. None of it is required. The only required ones are the red ones. And you have to pick the date and you have to select the profession. If you don't know their profession, pick the first one. I don't care. If you do know it, put the right one in as best you can. But the most important thing is to pick the date and then you have to select whether they're a visitor, a guest or a substitute. So that's how you register a visitor, no matter whether they're a visitor for the first time, which is when they're a visitor or whether they're a guest, which means they're coming back again or whether they're a substitute. Now, by the way, if you don't know any of that, and if you're sending out an invitation, then they fill that out. They register themselves. But I think it's best if we register them as best we can. If you can't register them because you don't know all that info, send them a link to the invitation. And that, I'll just go back, is right um, here. Invite to my chapter. If you invite them, then they get to the login screen. They will. Um, 
acknowledge and, and verify their email address and then they can register themselves. Okay. So that is how to register a visitor. What happens after they register? You need to know this. They're going to receive immediately an email from BNI Connect welcoming them and confirming that they're confirmed to attend where it is. And then look at this. Our visitor host team will be in touch regarding payment to complete your registration. That's in bold red. It is at the bottom, but it's in bold and red. All right. Then it's very important. The culture of your chapter is very important. The visitor host needs to send something to them because we've said that they will. So does your visitor host have a process when someone registers, do they automatically send them an email with a payment link and information about where and when and how and what to prepare and all of that? Each chapter has their own culture, but your chapter, this is really important. And finding out what you guys do and contributing and helping that's powerful. After that, pre-introduce them to a member is my suggestion, our suggestion. We think that it is going to be ever more powerful for them to come if they have a reason and someone to meet. Yeah? So, you know, if, if, um, if Crystal really wants them to meet um, the mortgage broker that's in the chapter, she can she can do a pre-introduction, maybe by email. I'm really looking forward to it. My friend Jessica is coming to the meeting on this day, so I'm really excited for you to meet Jessica. Yeah. Also, connect with them a day before and just send them a reminder. Or or or, you know, I got an email yesterday from Will Atto in BNI United. He invited me to come and watch his presentation. So he sent me a really lovely email yesterday and said, I'm so looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. That's it. That's all he said. Nice. It wasn't long. And it was personal. He didn't blind copy me and send it to a whole bunch of people. He just sent it to me. That'd be lovely, wouldn't it? I'm really looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. And if they write back and say, oh my God, I forgot. Well, then you can say, listen, no problem. Let me get you back the week after. The visitor experience at the meeting should be to be met and be greeted with a really nice layout, as we talked about last week. To meet people that have badges on and to have fun in the meeting and not be bored and on your phone. We don't want them to see us on our phone the whole time because Andrew said before, you know, they might just be sitting there on their phone the whole time because they don't feel like they're engaged. But if we're engaging them, they won't do that. So it's really important that we, maybe we check in when we get there, maybe we take a photo or two, but we are not on our phones because we're at the most important meeting of our week, really. Now, visitor follow-up is incredibly important as well. And the chapters that do this best are the chapters that grow. So first of all, we say goodbye and we thank them. We do that at an orientation, all right? really powerful. We share business cards and pictures on Facebook. And if you would like a really great um, example of how to make a visitor feel amazing, look at what Justin has been doing for BNI Business Express, because he is writing incredible weekly summaries of, of what's happened. And he's tagging the visitors in there and thanking them for coming and giving them exposure on LinkedIn really, really powerful. So here he is right here in the flesh, Justin Dale. Look him up on LinkedIn, connect with him and tell him you're in BNI and then voyeur on what he's doing and find out who in your chapter would be best place to do something like that. It does take him time, but he's developing a, a following and he's got a process that he can pass on to someone else when he changes that leadership position. That should be a leadership position in all of its own right. All right. BNI Discovery, send them to BNI Discovery because it's such a powerful tool for conversion. And it's a great place for them to know more about BNI. If you yourself have not visited BNI Discovery, I invite you to come and participate in it. 
once, just once, and take the CEU points for it as well. And a phone call. Now, your visitor host team is responsible for following up with visitors. It really is. But a phone call from you to say, so glad you came this morning. Thank you. Did you enjoy it? Would you like to meet anybody else in the, in the meeting? And they will tell you if they're thinking about becoming a member. They will tell you if they've got questions. They will tell if they're not. Oh my God, it was great, but I can, couldn't be a member. No problem. I know how you feel. I felt the same way. What I found was it was actually the best way of getting referrals that I could possibly think of. And it saved me time rather than costing me time. You, you'll, I just said that pretty easily, didn't I? I know how you feel. I felt the same way. What I found was that it was a better experience and a better use of my time than it could have been other ways. I'm going to keep moving because we got five minutes. But a phone call from you is ever so powerful. So if the culture of your chapter is that the visitor host follows up and that you follow up, then we are going to be cooking with gas. All right, how do you book into BNI Discovery? I'm going to give you six, five ways, five ways. It's on your trade sheet. Do you see this QR code right here? Join the BNI Discovery session. If your trade sheet does not have that on it, ask me to make you a trade sheet, and I will. The other way is your tent card. The visitor tent cards that you're putting in front of the visitors each week have Discover BNI right on them. And they can do that QR code when you put it up on the screen. Often people don't click it fast enough. So let them know that it's on the tent card right in front of them and that they can easily book into that session just like that. It is also on the visitor handout that we have prepared for BNI SNE. This is the handout that we have trained all of the visitor hosts on using. And that should never be given out during the meeting. It should be given out at the orientation. And during the orientation, we hand this out and look at that. Boom. It's got a QR code on it. Ready to go. Also, you can book in Discovery right from our homepage. On our homepage, we've got right here, book a Discovery session. So if they go to BNISNE.com, they click that button. Boom. They can register. And the final place where they can find it is on the event calendar. And that event calendar is right here. And it's got the BNI Discovery every single Wednesday, every single Wednesday, right there. All of those are public sites. All of those are public available. New members then should go through new member orientation. That's the first time that the member, the mentor coordinator meets with them. They introduce the passport program. They go through the member success program. And I would like to encourage you not to use the acronym MSP. I'd like everybody from the president down, everybody in the chapter to start to use the full language of member success program rather than MSP so that visitors understand what it is because they don't. And we offer help at every opportunity for new members. With two minutes to spare, I am now to the final slide, which is some additional homework that would help you for this content and for next week's content. The first one is what role do we play? And the second one is measuring your ROI in BNI. You can use the QR codes here. I will also be sending out tomorrow morning a, the, the link to this training so that you could rewatch it or help your the rest of your chapter watch it. I'll also send you the QR code, the um, links for both of these so that you have them on your computer. And I will also be sending you the link for next week's session, which starts on Thursday at 4 p.m. If you get here five minutes early, then we get to have a little chat with you before we start, which is always lovely because that means that we start on time. So I'd encourage you to log in at 3.55. I have a question from Alex. Alex. Yes, thank you. Um, just a quick question on the referral. And so um, 
I'm just curious. Sometimes I cannot give direct referrals, but I know somebody. It's um, it's a, in the context sphere of the other person. Will that count as a referral? No, that would count as a really nice thing to introduce them to. That's 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 being lovely and growing their network, and I encourage it heavily. Okay. Yeah. It, it wouldn't it would it wouldn't be a referral because it's not going to result in in immediate closed business. However, that person. So let's say you give a referral to Mark like that, and then Mark gets business out of it. He might tell you, you know what? It's through the introduction to that person that I got this, and he'll give you the thank you for closed business. It's almost third tier in a way. Yes. So for example, um, I know accountant. Uh, I don't have direct referral for Mark, but I know accountants and the accountants can give referral to Mark. And so and then I introduce Mark to um, to the accountant. Does that does that how does that work? Well, it's not a referral for business yet. It's a referral to a possible referral partner. And since you already have an accountant in your chapter, you could invite that accountant to come as a visitor so you can get a point that way. You can also get good kudos from Mark for introducing him to the accountant because he'll love you. And then if it turns into closed business, he'll give you credit for that if you do the introduction the right way. So if he knows that it's through your introduction that that accountant came into his purview, then he's going to give you all of the credit and he's going to ask you for more introductions like that. And he's going to try and find more referrals for you because you're helping him so much. So it's a good, warm, fuzzy feeling, but it's not a referral. Right. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. And it's something you should do. That's about sharing your networks with each other, you guys. That was a great question. And we're going to talk a lot about referrals next week. I hope you found this very helpful. I hope you found it so helpful that you will recommend it to every single possible person in your chapters so that we can make this an amazing region and we can grow. Have a great week, you guys. Thank you for being here live. And for you watching the replay, please write to me and tell me some of the things you're going to do after watching this. I loved getting those emails. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks, Wendy. Thank you. And thank you, Andrew, so much for your help getting ready for this. My pleasure. Great to be part of it. Thanks, team. Thanks, everyone. Yep. Bye. Thanks. Thanks, Paul. Thanks a lot, everybody.